So I honor the Lord for her tonight. And your brother. And I thank God for all of you who are here tonight. Yes. When last night, Pastor Hollis did a, an amazing job. Amen. Well, yesterday, yes, he did an amazing job. So he started the right, revival off right. Yes, sir. And I like that he talked about Paul. And one of the resounding themes that I heard was pressure. Yes, all right, now. And man, he talked about that pressure. He talked about the pressure that Paul went through. Uh -huh. And it was the pressure that he went through that made him who he was. All right, all right. He even quoted one of the scriptures where Paul was so bold enough to say, you know, sometimes in God, you, you have to flex a little bit. All right. All right. But flexing ain't for yourself. Flexing for God. Yeah. And Paul said he wasn't flexing about the things that he had. Yeah. He was flexing about the things that he was able to get through yeah. because of God. Watch this. For the sake of the gospel. For the advance. Yes, yes. And so sometimes, and a lot of times, God will put pressure on us uh -huh. to produce or to squeeze out what He's placed inside right. of us. Yeah. Yeah. See, the anointing can only be produced by something that is squeezed. Yeah. Yeah. You remember when Paul said, Stir up the gift that is in you? Uh -huh. So that means that there is something that God has placed inside of you, right. but it has to be stirred up. Yeah. But you can't even get the oil juice that's in the orange juice bottle until the orange itself has been squeezed. And sometimes God has to put pressure on us to squeeze us until every last drop of the anointing comes out of us. So that we don't die full, but we die empty like Miles Monroe said. So if you're under pressure, I'm going to let you know that God is trying to get something out of you. God! And I'm going to continue in the same vein that Pastor Hollis uh, started off with. But here's the deal. I want to put pressure on you. I want to put pressure. I want to apply some pressure tonight to the church. Because the church is full, but ain't no anointing coming out of it. And see, what happens is when you're full of something yeah. and you don't use it for a while, it'll settle in the bottom. Right. So that's why Paul had to come and remind Timothy. He said, boy, there's something in you. you got to stir. It came from your grandma. And it came through your mama. You remember he said Eunice. And he, and he, yeah. and he said, but it's all I am convinced that it's also in you. So therefore, stir up the gift that is in you. And there are many gifts that are in the body of the Christ, but the church has gotten so comfortable, so stagnated, that it has settled. And there's a dying world on the outside that has not been served, that has not been ministered to, that has not been healed because we have in church services. And all of the gifts have settled in the church. We sing in the church. We serve in the church. We give in the church. All right. But what about the model that Jesus left? Yeah. I got to come on now. I got to slow down. I got to slow down because the, the body of Christ needs to hear this. I want to first apologize because I can't apologize for the truth you're going to hear tonight. This teaching is going to offend some people. But it's also yes, going to liberate some people. Yes, yes. You know, the word says in John 8, 32, <laughs> and you shall know the truth. <laughs> make you free. Make, yeah. Yeah. It will make you free. Mm. It will break every chain, just like the songwriter said. Yeah. Now, often it's not that something is always said wrong, but it's that it was heard wrong. Mm. Uh, all right. Have you ever been talking to somebody and you said it as clear and as best as you could. As a matter of fact, sometimes I have conversations with myself. <laughs> so when I say it, I want to make sure that I'm saying it yeah. so simple and so uh -huh. clear that you can understand it the first time yeah. I say it. Yeah. Yeah. But then some people have the audacity to act like you said something wrong, but no, I didn't say anything yeah. wrong. You heard me wrong. I said it exactly how I said it. And there are people who are going to come to me after I minister this message 
And they're going to say, did you really mean to say that? You know the Bible says this. Or well, you, did you consider this? No, what I'm saying tonight, I'm, I'm just letting you know right now. I said it, and I said it, and I meant it, all right? Yes, yes, yes. So, 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 so I'm not responsible for how you hear. I'm just responsible for what I say. Responsible to God. Now, I'm trying my best, Pastor. I want to preach with love tonight. Yeah. I want to preach with love tonight. Yeah. Because sometimes people get confused. You know how sometimes children say, you don't love me. But I had to correct you. I had to discipline you. Because if that behavior is not corrected, it's going to flow over into some other areas. So let me stop you right now. You can get mad at me all you want. If you have children, you know what I'm talking about. You're going to get over it, though. You'll be all right tomorrow. Because when you wake up in the morning, I'm still going to love you. I'm still going to feed you. I'm still going to take care of you. But right now, i got to correct something that's out of alignment. And if I don't straighten it up, it will mess up you and things in your life and certain things that are purposed to be in your life, but they won't come into your life if they see this in you. Come on, man. It's like the pair of the sword. He wasn't concerned about the ground that it fell on. Uh -huh. His job was just to sow the seed. Sow the seed. Yeah. Some fail. Yeah. Some good fail ground. Some fail. Hard ground, stony ground. <laughs> but some fell on good ground and it produced yeah. some 30, some 60, some yeah. 100. Yeah. Yeah. So tonight I'm asking you to listen with the right heart. That's why the word ear is in the center of heart. Yeah. Because you have to listen not only with your ears, yeah. you have to listen with your heart. Yeah. You know how sometimes some people can say something to you, and you know they said it with their heart, so you can't be offended. You can't get mad. Because even though it hurt me for you to say it, you meant well because you told me the truth. Now, I don't want nobody who's not going to tell me the truth. Listen, if you got something to say to me, come say it. Yeah. I made a post recently that said, if you got a problem with me, don't talk about me, talk to me. So, I am so I'm not talking about the church. I come to talk to us because I'm a part of it too. The old saying says you can lead a horse to water. So I found out that you can also lead folk to knowledge. But you can't make them. Yeah. Think. Uh -uh. So they got to receive it on their own. Oh Amen. They got to receive it on their own. So I, I'm just here tonight just to grab you by your lashes right. yeah. and just lead you to the water. Come on now. By the lashes. That's it. Lead you to the water. By the so, lashes. <laughs> by the lashes. <laughs> yes, sir. That's for you. So listen, you can eat the fish. Yeah. And spit out the bones. Yes, sir. All right. Boy, I knew this. Oh, my God. Eat the fish and spit out the bones. So let's dive into the word yeah. and let the seeds fall where they may. Let us pray. Yeah. Father God, we bless you and we thank you. Thank you. We honor you for this night, for this time, for this gathering. Yes, Lord. For this movement, for this yes. revival. We thank you, Lord God, that you spoke to the heart of one of your, your pastors, your prophets, the man of God. That he would be so concerned about the body that even in this time, Lord God, where there's so much going on. Yes, Lord Jesus. He said we need to put a pen in this. Yes. We need to pause right here. Mm -hmm. Because now is the right time. Mm -hmm. For us to revive yes. the body of Christ. Yes, Lord. For us to breathe life back into yes. what it looks like it's been dying. Yes. And Father God, we know that you are God who is, who yes. is so strategic yes, Lord. that the days were numbered and aligned yes. to meet us at this divine appointment. Yes. Yes. Now, Lord, let your word come forth. Yes, Lord Jesus. Let me decrease so that you can increase. Yes, Lord. Let me be quiet so that you can speak. Yes. Yes. I humble myself under yes. your mercy. Yes. Have your way. Have your way. Have your way, Lord, tonight. Open up the ears of the body. Let yes. those who have ears to hear, hear yes. what you are saying to your church. Mm -hmm. Because your church does not belong to a pastor. Your church does not belong to the prophets. Your church does not belong to the apostles or the bishops. Yes. It does not belong to a religion. Yes. But it belongs to you, Lord. Yes. 
So let us hear not what others are saying, yeah. but let us hear what you are saying. Yeah. Prepare the hearts and the minds yeah. to receive this word tonight. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Yeah. Let every heart say amen. 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 God's plan unfolds in three dimensions. Right. Phases. Mm -hmm. And each dimension requires, hear me now, a shift. Mm. <laughs> and it's like gear shifting in a vehicle. And if you've ever driven a, 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 a stick, you know you've got to push down on the clutch yeah. or else it's not going to move. Yeah. But when you push down on that clutch, you can shift it into gear. Yeah. Yeah. And you move from one gear to the next, accelerating in speed and changing in purpose. All right. And so just like a transmission shifts gears, the body of Christ, or God will shift the body of Christ. Yes, sir. And I'm going to show you from the word tonight that there have been some shifts that have been taking place. Mm -hmm. Some of them undetected and some of them have been noticeable. But if you look at the word transmission, the word trans means change. Mm -hmm. And mission means purpose or assignment. All right. All right. So when God shifts us Come on. out of one phase or dimension into the next, He's changing the gears, yeah, so we're moving out of Old Testament uh -huh. into New Testament. Yeah, right. We're moving out of Egypt into the wilderness, into the promised land. Is there anybody here with yeah. And so we're changing missions as we're shifting. Mm -hmm. And as we shift, just like the, the transmission is changing, because now that it's come out of first gear, into second gear, it can move fast. Oh, right. it, it, it has accelerated. Right, and those people who don't shift when God shifts and accelerates, the purpose has moved on, but they're still stuck in the old gear. And there are some people that are moving and accelerating with God, but some people have not shifted and they're left behind in the last gear and things that are moving like they should move because they're in the wrong gear. See, when the car shift gears is leaving one gear going into a different gear, it's able to accelerate and move fast. It's operating, watch this, at a higher speed and a higher level. God has been shifting gears in the church uh, at pivotal junctions in time. All right. Okay. And, and, and watch this now. Some people have missed the shift. Yeah. Some people are missing the shift. Uh -huh. And some will miss, miss the shift. <laughs> watch out, man. Now, if you miss the shift, uh -huh. you'll get left behind. All right. All right. Doing something old while God has moved on something to new. something new. Yeah. You'll be left behind stuck. Watch this. Working an outdated word. Oh! Oh! You got it, but I gotta let I gotta. Oh, I gotta yeah. Yeah. You'll be stuck behind working an outdated word. All right, my God. All the while thinking you are doing God's work and will, but He has moved on. The only thing worse than doing the right thing, doing doing the watch the only thing that's worse than doing the right thing wrong is doing the wrong thing. See, that's why you got to know your wife's love language. Take them, take them. You want to love her. You try to love her. Yeah. But you, you, you're speaking the wrong language. <laughs> you're doing, you want to do the right thing, but you're doing it the wrong way. All right. If my wife does, come on now, there you go. If my wife love language is not gifts. But it's affection and attention. Come on, right now. I'll be working my wheels, giving her gift, trying to figure out why she don't like the gift. Because she don't need gifts. She needs affection. She needs her back rub while we land in the bed. And sometimes she'll, I know when she needs it because she'll scoot over a little bit closer to me. And 
I said, well, it's time for me to speak a love language. And then when I start rubbing her shoulders and, and caressing her back, then I can just, just feel her just snuggle into, into work. Because I'm working my garden. I'm speaking the right language. And let me tell you something. The church has been trying to love on God. Have been trying to please God. But we're not speaking his language. And so they get left behind, stuck working in an outdated world. It's not that God didn't tell you to do it. Yes, yes. You just still doing it when he told you to do something else. Yeah. All right. All right. See, the current church is doing the wrong thing, but they think they're doing it right. All right. All right. So God's plan of redemption, it shifts into phases and dimensions. All right. And the first place we see this is when God brought his children out of Egypt. All right, man. I got you. And remember, and, and, and it's three dimensions. I, I wrote a book. I thought I brought it with me, but it's in the back. And the book is called 3D Ministry. All right. And God gave a word to me concerning the body of Christ and the model of Jesus' ministry and how it, how it looked and how it moves. Mm -hmm. And it moves from deliver, mm -hmm. develop, and deploy the three Ds. All right, so you got three dimensions that are moving. Uh -huh. And any ministry in the Bible, you can lay that blueprint over it and it fits into that mold. And every church that is in operation that is not delivering, All right. developing, All right. and deploying. Come on. Come on. With me. Right. Now you're speaking God's love language. Right. But most of the church has gotten real good at deliverance. To the point that some of them have called their church name the such and such of the house of deliverance. Uh -huh. But that's just one dimension. You got to move from deliverance into developing. Come on, come on now. Come on. And then when you move into yeah. developing, some people have gotten so good, some churches have gotten so yeah. good at developing that all they do is just teach folk the word. All they do is just develop people, just preach at them, preach at them, preach at them. We having this, we having that, we're doing this. But nobody ever gets to the place. That, why do you think the, the veil of the temple was rent in two? Because there was no back door out the temple. See, God is just, that's why he did Some churches haven't allowed God to rent the veil in the back of the temple. All right, all right, all right. And so all they do is want to deliver and develop. They just want to preach to folks and want to have a, a, an anointing slanging and spitting and slobbing and shouting good time. Yeah. You right, right. You right. But when do we get to the point that we make it to the third dimension to where they're getting deployed? Yeah. See, there are shifts in our relationship yeah. with God. He shipped us out of just being delivered. There ain't enough just to be saved. Yeah. Then he moves us into development. Yeah. And that's where you got to work out your own salvation. Yeah. Yeah. Then he moves us into deployment. And that's where we're moving into our own individual purpose. Yeah. And so many people think that their only ministry purpose is tied to the church building ministry. Listen, I'm not against the church building ministry. This is part of it. Yeah. But this ain't all. Listen, I'm glad that we can come here and pray. I'm glad that we got good musicians. I'm glad that we have a anointed preacher. I'm glad that we got people that can serve on the door. I'm glad that we got people that can serve in children's ministry. But while you're serving in children's ministry, do you leave out and do any other ministry? While you're serving on the deacon board, do you leave out and do any other service? While you're serving in the church, at what point are you going to be deployed? Preach all of it. All of it. Preach the whole thing, son. So the first shift, ha shift happened in Egypt. Uh -huh. Remember when they were delivered from Egypt? Uh -huh. They shifted out of slavery and bondage. Mm -hmm. But they shifted out of a location, but they didn't shift out of a mentality. All right. All right. Come on now. 
So when they got in the wilderness, some of them said, I wish. For it would have been better. And now some people that are so dead set on not moving forward with God, they're so used to working that outdated word that and, and they'd rather stay in the same purpose and position and assignment they're in. And God said, I got a whole promised land from you, but I can't even get you out of the bondage of Egypt. I got a whole inheritance for you. But I can't get you out. But you crying to go back to where you came from. Can I share something with you? Yeah, sure. God has shaken and shifted us. We're in a shift right now. And he used the pandemic to shake us and shift us. Because always before a great shift, there comes a great shake. Who've been saved forever and can't even recognize that God is shaking you, trying to wake you up, trying to bring you back. Come on, trying to shake you for a ship. He wants to shift the body, and so he shook us with the pandemic. Saying, Y'all better stop doing that old stuff. Y'all better stop getting comfortable with that old way. Because I'm trying, watch it, I'm trying to do a new thing. But it's really not a new thing to God, it's just a new thing to us. It's always been God's purpose, it's always been on his mind, it's always been in his plan, it's always been in his will, but he has to ship us to line up with it. Or watch this, or the church can accelerate to its next purpose. Now I'm going to drop something on you, something on you real quick. We came from the Old Testament. Yeah, I ain't even God. finished with the shifting of Egypt. Amen. But I got to tell you this. We Amen. came from the Old Testament and we shifted. You remember they, all the laws and the religious rituals they did? Yeah. All, all, all of it took place in the building. Yeah. So it was, it was all of this religious stuff was happening in the building for so long that God said it's time for a shift. <laughs> so he shook things up. And when he shook him up, guess how he shook him up? Mm -hmm. There comes a man who says he's the son of God. Yeah. Yeah. He says, I am the Messiah, yeah. the one who you've been waiting on. Yeah. He shook him up so bad that they, when they heard that he was born, Herod said, go and seek him that I may come and worship him. But he didn't want to worship him. He wanted to kill him. So, 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 he come, he shit. Jesus grows up. Yeah. He starts getting anointed by, by John, his yes. cousin. Yes. He starts walking in his purpose. Yes. And he, now here's the interesting thing. The current management does not even recognize <laughs> the son of the manager, of the CEO yes. that they're working for. Come on, All right, man. I'm going to drop something on you tonight that's going to make you look at this thing all day. They don't even recognize that it's Jesus. And can I submit to the body of Christ that there's a church that's currently in position right now in the earth and Christ is moving and shifting and we don't even recognize it. Come on and go with me then. You remember when Jesus came walking on the Walking on the water at night. They didn't know it was him. They didn't know it was him. Because they had never seen him that way before. And I'm here to tell you that the church's identity is shifting. It's changing. And it's not going to look like what we always seen it as. Because as he comes walking on the water, some say it looks like a ghost. See, when people don't know exactly what it is, they start calling and making up names for it. They'll say, that ain't Jesus. But yes, it is. They'll seek something happening over here and say, that ain't Jesus. So you got to be careful of what you say ain't God because it could be God, but he just doesn't look like what your old, outdated, religious mind thinks that he looks like. So they shifted out of Egypt. 
into the wilderness. And while they were in the wilderness, y'all remember everybody didn't make it. And listen, I love you so much that I came to tell you I want you to make the shift. I don't want you to get lost. I don't want you to miss what God has for you next. See, there is always a next with God. That's why you can't get complacent where you are. Some of your finances are not moving because you don't see that God has a next for you. Some of your relationships have gotten stagnated and comfortable because you don't see that there's a next for you. And even the church, the body of Christ has gotten so comfortable in doing the last word that God gave us that we don't see that there is a next. For us. So some people died out. Those that murmured and complained. Yes. Those that got caught up in court rebellion. You remember yes. they were swallowed into the ground. Yes. But then the second ship that brought them, watch it, the first ship delivered them from Egypt. Yes. The second ship brought them through the wilderness. Yes. And the third ship brought them into the promised land. Right. Deploy. Right. Deploy. Right. Deploy. Right. Deploy. <laughs> I knew somebody was with me. Do you see God's plan of redemption? Everything that he does works in three dimensions. Egypt, the wilderness, the promised land. Do you see it? Deliver. He delivered them out of Egypt. Develop. He developed them in the wilderness. Deploy. He deployed them into the promised land. Somebody going to get it tonight. Now watch this. Yes. Remember, it's three dimensions. Uh-huh. Old Testament, mm -hmm. New Testament. Uh-huh. But what's next? All right. Let me show you. All right. The return of Christ. Yeah. 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 The, the kingdom. The kingdom. We're in the last ship, y'all. The kingdom. Everybody's saying, you don't know the day, nor the time, nor the hour. Yeah. No, you can't get into specifics now. We ain't we ain't, you, you, I ain't going to mess with you now. You tell me, tell me he's coming back. They said he was coming back in 2000. And boy, we bought the batteries. We bought the bread. We bought the water. We, we, we bought the milk and eggs. We done bought 2K. We done built bunkers in the ground. We done did all kinds of stuff. Because the Mayans said he was coming back in 2000. Come on, man. You ain't going to pinpoint the dead hour, but I will tell you this. That it's going to happen. And every knee going to bow. And every tongue going to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And let me tell you, that why, why you think he gives parables about the wedding? Why do he give a parable about the bridegroom and the oil? See, because the foolish and the wise, there's a difference. Those who are wise, guess what? You got your oil. I, I, you are I tell them, look, I stay ready, so I don't have to get ready. I don't know what you're doing, but I've been ready. Look, I, I, hey, last night, I slept, I slept with my clothes on because I knew I had to come down here and preach. Ain't nothing going to stop me from doing what God called me. So the wise virgins, they were ready. They had all. But the foolish ones... They had, to, they had to try to go and find some before it came. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But we got the Old Testament, that church, we came out of that, that's before Christ came and shifted. Yes. We got the New Testament church, that's after Christ arrived. Uh -huh. They didn't recognize who he was. Yeah. The very management that was running the church, the Pharisees, the scribes, and the Sadducees, mm -hmm. they were left inside of a building doing outdated religious rituals <laughs> while Jesus out here raising the dead. Yes, yes. While Jesus out here having miracle healing and deliverance service at folks' houses. Yes, they breaking open the roof yes. to get into the house where Jesus was at. But the church was in so bad a shambles that when Paul, was it Peter, who was it, Paul and Peter, Peter and John were walking to the temple, yes. they were about to go into the church building. There was a man who was crippled, they're begging for money. Yeah. Everybody else who was watch this, going into the beautiful, yeah. except that he's laid at the beautiful gate called Beautiful. So they were going into this beautiful edifice that they had erected for God, and they said, this is God's house, but God don't need a house, because how many of you know that God can't sleep in a house? God made the material that you built the house with. So when you call this a house of God, be sure that you let folks know that this ain't his address. 
This is just the place where his church meets. The building ain't the church, it's the people inside of it. So while they're on their way into the beautiful, walking through the beautiful gate, they pass church on their way to church. Because you remember, it was about the ninth hour, so they knew it was time to go and pray. But how you going to go inside of a building and pray, and you ain't even got the power to raise up the man that's sitting on side of it? Now let me show you how bad, let me show you how bad the church was in, how bad a shape it was in. The man didn't want to go inside. All right now. All right now. If there was power to heal on the inside, he'd already been in. He said, I don't watch all of y'all. I know what y'all about. Because I've been in at the gate. I watch you cuss from the car to the door. I watch you talk about folks while you're coming in. But you throw me a couple of dollars and a couple of loose quarters and you think that you've done your service for the Lord for the day. Nah, I don't want to come in there and make no noise and shout with y'all. But Peter and John had something on them and in them that they had shook up. And it wasn't just at the bottom, it was at the top. To the point that he reached out his hand and he said, take up thy bed and walk. And immediately the man's ankle bones received strength. Not because he went into a church service. Not because the praise team sung good. Not because they took up an offering and gave it to him. But because of the anointing that was on the boy's life. And they didn't get it from the Pharisees, scribes, and Sadducees. They got it from Jesus. And when they got it from Jesus, they gave it to somebody else. See, the reason the church can't do nothing for nobody else because they ain't got nothing from Jesus. Yes, sir. And so after Peter and John was used by God and the Holy Spirit to change this man's life, then he went in. We got it backwards. Yes, sir. <laughs> We've been trying to invite people to church <laughs> to get them saved, healed, and delivered. Yeah. But we're supposed to save them, heal them, and deliver them. And you ain't got to ask them to come to church. They'll follow you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. That's it. That's it. I want to speak in tongues, but I don't think the folk who watching us going to get it. I want to say, 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 I to say, You're going to have to tell me how much time I got because I'm full and I'm and it's just spewing out. Right. You can, you can preach the rest Sunday if you want to. Yes, let it happen. You can come preach the rest Sunday if you want to. Yes, it. Folk don't have a problem coming in. Yes, sir. If you meet them where they are on the outside. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Not only did he come in, but when he heard the tambourines, mm -hmm. when he heard the drums, uh -huh. When he heard the harps and the flutes, uh -huh. he started dancing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. See, them folk ain't gonna dance just cause you invited them to church. <laughs> you have to give them something on the outside first. All right, Jakes. All right, Jakes. Oh my so I'm gonna bring I'm, I'm at the land. Right, I'm, I'm gonna have to land this plane. All right, Doug Powell. I'm gonna land this plane. But I wanna tell you this. Mm -hmm. tell it, tell it. That we are in the third phase. Mm -hmm. All right. Amen. And we're in the stretch. Remember, that was a long stretch now. Yeah. From the Old Testament to the New Testament. Uh -huh. And we're in the stretch from the New Testament to the home, home base. Mm -hmm. And in that stretch, when we make it to the home base, we made it home. Yes. Yeah. See, folks think that it, what the Bible talks about the bride of Christ and his wedding because yeah. it ain't took place yet. Yeah. 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 <laughs> See, Christ ain't married the church yet. We just engaged. That's why he gave us the Holy Spirit, which is the promise that a wedding is going to happen. But before you get married, you give her a ring. And the ring represents covenant. And it means that I'm going to be faithful to you 
and only you until we get married and after we get married. But this, 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 this is just a sign. Terry, Terry. So that when folk try to figure out who you are, you know some people, they don't know, you know, they try to say, is, is he married? But when I raise my hand to praise the Lord, I stop all doubt. See, some folk can't see your Holy Spirit until you raise your hand. See, you got to learn how to praise God. But not just the praise him when the music is playing. Yes. But praise him when somebody's in need and you got yeah. it to help them. Yeah. I used to feel so bad when I would see people in need and I didn't have it to help them. Yeah. Yeah. But then the Holy Spirit spoke to me so softly and said, if you ain't got it, yeah. it ain't your sign. Yeah. But when you got it, yeah. it is your sign. Yeah. So we're moving. We're shaking. Yeah. And we're shifting. 